What is going on everybody and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. Today's episode is one that you guys have asked for a long time on the channel and that is a rod and reel arsenal. I believe it has been at least three if not four years since I last did a rod and reel arsenal video and I thought you know what I'm about to head off on a long trip. I need some content and so I'm going to satisfy the, uh, the, the peanut gallery and the crowds that want a rod and reel arsenal uh, by giving you guys this video. And so I'm actually kind of excited to show you guys the rod and reels that I'm running this year. It's a little bit different than past years in terms of the loose combos that I have uh, and the way that I run them is a little bit different than I have in the past. So of course if you guys are new here please subscribe to this channel. If you like this sort of content please let me know in the comment section below. If you don't like this kind of content Content, please don't subscribe because I make this type of content so uh, th there's that but without further ado we are going to open up the rod locker of my 2019 Skeeter FX20 and uh, see what combos are in my arsenal this year now two disclaimers before we hop into this arsenal video one is that I am sponsored by Luz so yes these are all Luz rod and reel combos no I don't work with Shimano I don't work with favorite I don't work with Abu or, or Quantum I work with Luz and so if you don't like Luz you can leave this video but I have found in my 10 years of bass fishing experience that some of the best quality for the money um, and some of the most durability especially is found in the lose uh, quality of products the lose line of products and so i'm very excited to show you guys the ones that i'm running it's i think i've been with lose three if not four years now and so i've had that amount of time to figure out which combos um, kind of suit me best for my style of fishing here in the south i'm from texas if you guys didn't know and of course, what combos I love to bring on fishing trips with me to Canada, to Minnesota, to New York, as I'm about to head to tomorrow morning. And so the other disclaimer that I'm going to say is that my rod and reel arsenal is changing consistently. Like on a, on a every week, every fishing tournament, every fishing trip basis, my rod and reel arsenal is changing. And that is because I'm not necessarily a technique specific type guy. I do have a, rod that are, a few rods that are like that, but I have a lot of rods that can be used for many different purposes depending on the fishing situation that is thrown at me. And so the rod and reel arsenal that I'm going to show you guys right now may be, you know, half, half of the, the rod and reel combos might be different uh, come tournament time next week. And so I really love to change out my line, change out my rod and reels together because if I'm fishing, you know, a shallow tournament, I'm going to be using more of my shallow sticks, maybe changing some of my line on the higher gear ratio reels to fit those rods, yada, 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 y'all know the, the drill. Um, but because I have so many rods and reels, I don't like to keep them, you know, together. I don't have like 10 rods and reels that are always the same uh, because I feel like, that kind of limits my possibilities and so I love to mix around rods and reels throughout the year. So disclaimer's done, let's hop into the content starting with my spinning rods. Now this is my assortment of what we here in the south call fairy wands or whippy sticks. Uh, you know here in Texas a lot of us don't like to throw spinning rods but I have found throughout my years of tournament fishing experience and of course traveling up north to fish for smallmouth you need a good assortment of spinning rods. Now I've never had, I think I have five full combos with two extra rods laying around here. I have never had this many combos before and that is because I've never fished a smallmouth only tournament where my partner and I need so many spinning rods and so I'm heading up to New York for the St. Lawrence River Bassmaster tournament next week and so or I guess this week and so I will need a good amount of spinning rods so I actually ordered a few new ones um, so I'm going to go over all the spinning rods I have including the ones that don't have any reels on them so the two that don't have any reels on them are I think just the same uh, Lou's TP1 speed stick I don't know if you guys can see that the TP1 speed stick it is a 6.9 medium light it is says the shaky head drop shot finesse I found it's a little bit light for shaky heads at least the ones that I throw and so this is basically my drop shot rod I love this thing the tip is nice and whippy but it has a good amount of back backbone to set the hook I get really long casts with this and I just feel like it feels really good in the hand uh, I think it's a hundred dollar rod something like that and so very very affordable and I think I have like four of those if not more no I've got three I've got I've got these two here that are kind of backups I don't necessarily need those rods but in case I get to New York I hook a muskie and he breaks me off. I don't want to be, you know, lacking a rod that I could need for the tournament. And so I have another one of those rods right here on this brand new, I believe it is the Lose Custom, just the, yeah, just the Lose Custom Speed Spin. I think it's $100 as well. So for a $200 spinning rod combo, this is incredible. This is, it is incredibly light. The drag is super smooth. It is just a, I can't say enough about this combo and so I love Lou's spinning gear. I never thought that I would because I was such a big fan of some other companies spinning gear in the past but I have fallen in love with these especially for the price they're incredible and so I've got that one. Uh, those are kind of my drop shot combos. Now those don't have any line on them yet because I haven't spooled them up for New York but I'm about to spool them up with either some 15 or 20 pound braided line. 
I'll talk about all my lines throughout this video as well. Uh, and then the other ones that I have are kind of more all-purpose, uh, lighter, you know, sh or, uh, I guess heavier shaky head, heavier drop shot, jigging spoon, that kind of thing, top water occasionally for small mouth. My seven to seven two medium spinning rods. And so if you guys have ever fished a medium spinning rod, it almost feels like a medium heavy when it comes to a bait caster because they're, they're pretty stiff. But that is kind of what I use for more of my all purpose. And as you can see here, I have one of the um, 3000 size. I use all 3000 size spinning reels. The reason for that is because I like the bigger drag system and I like the way that the line spools off the reel as you make a cast. And so I love the 300 and 3000 size reels. So I have that. I have a Lou's Custom Inshore. Um, this is the custom speed spin for saltwater. I found that it works just as well for freshwater as well. I've got some 15 pound, one sec. Yep, 15 pound Seaguar Smackdown braid, the brand new high vis stuff. And on this one, I have Lou's highest quality spinning reel. I'm hoping we even shoot for the stars and make one higher quality than this. But for $129, this spinning reel is incredible. This goes head to head with some of the other higher $200 spinning reels from other companies. I've loved it. The drag is incredible. Never had any issues with the handles, you know, getting all stuck or anything. It is an incredible reel. And I have that on the Mark Rose series seven foot medium spinning rod. And then we get to my last spinning rod, which is quickly becoming one of my favorites. Now, this video will come out before a pretty crazy video I filmed with this rod comes out. But I, I can't speak highly enough of the brand new Luz Custom Pro Speed Stick 7.6 Medium. Now, if you thought that a drop shot rod like this one over here was whippy, you have not met this rod yet. This here, I'm going to see if I can take off the rod sock here. This here is like, this is a fairy wand. This is incredibly, incredibly whippy. And this is my hair jig rod. Now, if you guys didn't know, I work with Outcast Tackle and they make tiny little marabou hair jigs. It's called the Seth Fighter Jig. And for some reason, every species of bass loves them a little hair jig and especially smallmouth bass. And so I was fishing with my buddy Cole Forsyth up in Canada last summer, and he had a 7.6 medium rod, and he was able to sling these super light, like 332nd, 16th ounce hair jigs, like 20, 30 yards. And I was only getting about half the distance. And while I still caught fish, I didn't catch near as many as he did because of his casting distance. So I finally picked up one of these rods. And the thing that I love more than the casting distance and more than the sensitivity, is the amount of bend that the rod has. Now, when you're fishing a very light lure with a light wire hook like this, you don't need a lot of backbone to set the hook. You need more of a, I'd say, tapered feel from the rod, a more moderate bend in order to set the hook and keep that fish hooked. And I caught, you guys will see, a 7.7 pounder, almost an eight pound largemouth bass on a hair jig this size on this rod with 20 pound Seaguar Smackdown and eight pound, Seaguar uh, Tatsu fluorocarbon as my leader. It's incredible. I can't say enough about this rod. I didn't lose a single fish on this thing. I don't think so. Maybe I lost one or two because I caught like 30 that night on this. Incredible combo. The reason why I love it so much is because when the fish dives, it doesn't pull drag unless you have the drag set super loose. It just goes whoomp and your rod basically absorbs all the pressure from that fish running. And so that is why I love this rod. And I'm so looking forward to catching some big smallmouth on this come next week in the St. Lawrence River in New York. So that is all of my spinning rods. Didn't used to like spinning rods, but I've gained more of an appreciation for them. But the bread and butter of a Texas fisherman is the bait casting rod. And I've got some awesome combos down there to show you guys. So let's jump into it. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, my rod and reel arsenal is not necessarily complete all the time. So I have more rods than I do reels, just for the fact of you never know when you're gonna slam a rod in your car door and break it. You never know when, you know, you're gonna leave a rod in a buddy's boat and you need an extra. So I do have four extra bait casting rods that I don't have any reels on currently. And I also have one bait casting reel laying around without a rod on it. So I'll probably connect these two at some point. But the four rods that I have uh, not connected, I believe I have two custom speed sticks, a custom speed stick light and a TP1 black. And so I'll tell you guys kind of the price points of these rods as soon as I hop into the combos. But the TP1 black I have is a 7.2 medium heavy, one of my favorite rod comp, one of my favorite rods. Uh, another 7.2 medium, this here is the Crankbait Rod 1. It is a, you know, slightly longer rod than my square bow rod, so I usually throw about, you know, 6 to 10 foot divers on this rod. Then we've got 
My square bill crankbait rod, this is a custom speed stick 6.9 medium heavy. Use that for square bills, Kitex, that kind of stuff. And then I have a 7.4 heavy custom speed stick light flipping rod. So those are the four that I just don't have reels for right now. But let's hop into the combos that I do have reels for down here in the Skeeter box. Now, if you're curious which rod socks I'm using, I'm using the Slicks rod socks. It is a, I don't think it's a new company, but at least these models are fairly new. And when I signed with Outcast a few months ago, I kind of signed on with this company as well. And let me tell you, I've been incredibly impressed by these rod socks. Not only, not only because of the you know, construction and how durable and how you know, little the hooks actually poke through these things, but just because of the functionality of them. They come in all different uh, you know, sizes, shapes, and colors, and then they have incredible bands that I'll show you guys here in a second. Like when I pull out this rod, the band keeps the rod sock on the rod. That way you can hold the rod sock and the rod's not going anywhere. And other companies have these as well, but the good thing about these is that they are reinforced. You know, they're not sewed in, they're actually like tied onto a reinforced band. And then the band itself is rubber. It is not cloth, and so a hook has to try really hard to hook itself in this thing, whereas with other brands that have uh, a sort of bungee sort of thing that's not rubber, uh, hooks get lodged in those all the time, and so that's why I love the Slick series of rods. But let's see, I am not sure which rods I'm gonna start with, so, so I'm gonna poke around until I figure out what I want. Now the first three combos that I'm gonna discuss with on the bait casting side are going to be my crankbait combos. Now I do have, as you saw, one crankbait rod down there that does not have a reel on it. And then I believe I have one crankbait reel, I think it's back at the house, it does not have a rod. And so I should pair those together. But crankbaiting is one of my favorite techniques to do. And I'm just excited to show you guys these combos. And so the reel that I use exclusively for crankbaiting, and I've seen Alex Rudd uses this for other techniques besides crankbaits, but I've just found that the namesake itself, BB1, is meant for a crankbait. And that is the BB1 Pro. This here is a $200 reel from Lou's probably my favorite reel in the lineup because I just love crankbaiting and I love the price value for this reel. It is incredibly smooth. It casts a mile. This thing casts incredibly far. I can fit a whole lot of line on this thing, which helps, of course, with casting distance uh, and, and fishability. And so I have two combos here that right now are set up for deep cranking because it is summertime here in Texas. And so I was also in Alabama fishing Lake Gunnersville. And so I have two BB1 Pros, one with, I believe it's 10 pound uh, Seaguar red label no this is 10 pound cigar abrazex and this is 12 pound cigar red label just kind of testing out all sorts of different lines for crankbaiting definitely like abrazex line more for that and then these are two mark rose series uh team cust team lose custom pro rods i think the rods are 200 bucks or so um not my favorite in the lineup but for deep cranking they're really really good and so that's kind of my two deep crank setups the seven six medium heavy for those and then the one that I have after that, usually I do have two square bill rod setups, but right now I only have one, and it actually has a, uh, a mega bass jerk bait on it. And so, so this here is another custom speed stick, six nine medium heavy. One of my favorite jerkbait rods, I have thrown it on uh, my spinnerbait rod. It's a, I think it's a 610 medium or 610 medium heavy. Uh, I think jerkbaits, doesn't really matter what you throw it on as long as the rod isn't super long because you don't want to bring in a lot of line with your jerks. But I do have that on 12, no, this is definitely a 10 pound CR Abraze X as well. I think 10 pound, especially for the winter and the summer, is what I stick to my crankbaits because in the winter, you wanna get your crankbaits you know, you know, down there and have a very finessey application. And in the summer, you wanna get your crankbaits down there and, and dredge them on the bottom. And like I said, the BB1 Pro, and I think it is six, eight to one, this is, this is seven, one to one. But most of my reels are either in the six, eight to one, six, four to one. Uh, I do have a few that are in the higher eight gear ratios, but for crankbaits, I found that really you don't need a super high speed gear ratio unless you were throwing a rattle trap or something like that. And so that is the three crankbait rod combos that I have. And now let's move on to my braid combos. So throughout the year, I usually have two braid reels rigged and that's about the max. I, unless I'm fishing heavy grass or heavy, you know, timber or pads for an extended period of time, I'm not gonna have more than two rods rigged up with braid. And during the winter months here in Texas, I'll usually have one, if not zero rods rigged up with braid, just because I want to use those reels for other purposes. And I'm not usually flipping heavy cover or throwing top water in the winter. And so currently in the summertime, if you guys are watching this at a different time of the year, I'm filming this in, uh, in June. And so I do have two reels rigged up. One of these here is my a heavy flipping combo and one of these is my shorter cover shorter frog kind of more my dock skipping combo so we're gonna go over the heavy cover one first this here is the magnum heavy cover custom speed stick i think it's a 128 dollar rod and it is a 7.6 
extra heavy, fast action tip. And this thing is meant for throwing a large top water, like a whopper plopper, a long ways, flipping in some heavy grass, flipping in some wood, uh, fishing very gnarly docks. And so that is why I have 65 pound CR Smackdown braid. This is the stealth gray version. I love the Smackdown braid for, of course, as I mentioned, the spinning rods, but also for the bait casters. And then to go along with this rod, I have the Team Lose Pro TI. This thing is incredible. I have loved using, I have three Pro TIs and I'll discuss them throughout this video, but they are Lose highest end reel. This is $349 worth of absolute juiciness. So I love this thing. It is meant for heavy cover fishing. I do throw a Pro TI for other things like a Texas rig and a crankbait occasionally, but it is mostly my top water and flipping rod just because of the amount of drag it has. Don't quote me on this, but I believe it's like 17 pounds of drag. It has 11 ball bearings, and this is the 7 5 to 1 gear ratio. Just some incredible features in the Pro TI that a lot of the other reels, especially from other companies, don't have. Like I mentioned, the drag system is super strong, has a carbon fiber handle, so the reel is, of course, light as a feather. It is made of a titanium alloy finish. People say all the time, oh, lose reels are just plastic. That's not true at all. The, the very, very low you know, end of, of every rod and reel company but uh, of lose is made of certain types of plastic. But as soon as you get above like the $120 mark, every single reel is made out of some sort of you know, graphite or titanium or magnesium finish. Uh, and so these reels are super high quality. I mean, you can't bend this reel out. Like it is, it is a strong handle and this thing is meant for some strong fishing. And so that is the rod that I have for heavy flipping. And then the one that I have that I most often throw a frog skipping it under docks, you know, flipping small targets here and there. Has 50 pound Seaguar Smackdown with the 7.2 custom speed stick heavy action rod. So more of just a little flipping. I believe it's called the Magnum Grass Rod. Team Lose Custom Black reel. I love this thing. It's incredible. Like I said, all the reels that I have are basically matched for the type of fishing that I want them to do. And so all the ones that are kind of beefed up for heavy cover flipping, like I said, I'm, I can use for other techniques, but I love the ones with big spools, oversized handles to be used for flipping. So that is the two braid rods that I have. Now let's move on to kind of my heavier flipping combos, heavier Texas rigs, heavier jigs, but are not necessarily used with braid. Now the three rod combos that I have kind of to fit in this generic area, I would say are more of my uh, smaller swim baits, my football jigs, my Carolina rigs, all those kind of rods. Uh, and then of course I have one rod here that is my dedicated flipping rod. This rod I use for almost nothing else besides flipping a jig, flipping a you know six to seven inch Cinco as you saw in my Sam Rayburn video. Uh, and then of course I do throw a mag draft to swim bait on this rod occasionally. And that one is the one that's in my hand. If I can get rid of my other rods right now. And that here is I can't say enough about this combo. You guys have heard me rave about it all spring here on the channel, and that is the TP1 Black Speed Stick. I think it's a $119 rod, incredible rod. It has a lot of the higher functionality and higher quality pieces that rods like the Pro TI rod have, the highest you know quality rod lose makes, but in this lower price point. It has real wind grips, as tons of my rods do. I love the, the, the feel of having the tennis racket type grip, the golf grip on your rod, especially in inclement weather and rain and in cold weather. I feel like it holds really well and it, you, you know, your hand doesn't slip off. And then it has the vibration transfer ring. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this, but what it is, is it's basically a piece of the rod blank that they have molded to fit to the rod blank itself, but that your hand goes over. Usually my pinky goes over it. So when you get a bite on your rod, I'm feeling that on this vibration transfer ring. I didn't believe in it at first. I thought it was going to be just a big hoax, but I can feel bites that I've never felt before with this rod series. So I love this rod. It's incredible. It is a 7.4 heavy, extra fast tip. This is made for nothing but throwing uh, a flipping jig and flipping a bait. I have 20 pound Seaguar flipping fluorocarbon with the Pro TI reel as well in the 7, 5 to 1, 7, 5 to 1 gear ratio. Again, all this stuff will be linked below in the description, but I absolutely have fallen in love with this combo. Now my dedicated swim bait in Carolina rig rod is the custom speed stick 7.6. I believe it's a medium heavy. So I have the 7.6 heavy for flipping, you know, thick grass pads, throwing a frog a long distance. But this is the, I believe it's called the Magnum Rattle Trap Rod. So this thing says it's meant for rattle traps uh, and medium diving crankbaits. So I have deep cranked on this rod before. It's a decent one for that. But I love throwing a mag draft swim bait, a glide bait, that kind of thing. Now when I say glide bait, I mean like a, a river to sea S waiver, not a, you know, huge, you know, I slide or a Piz Custom Shadley. So I love throwing this thing, uh, like I said, for Carolina rigs, occasionally a jig, but mostly for swim baits. And I have it here on the Lose Hyper Mag. This is, or I guess it was their highest quality reel for a while. And to be honest, 
the Pro-TI and the Hypermag, while you think they look the exact same, besides the color, of course, they have very different purposes. The Hypermag, I would never flip with this thing. Uh, I'm sure you could and it would be successful, but it's not as beefy of a reel as the Pro-TI. This is made for more long casting, um, you know, wear and tear when it comes to crankbaits, rattle traps, swim baits, that kind of thing. So I love throwing that for swim baits and I have 17 pound Seaguar Invis X fluorocarbon on that. So that combo is probably, you know, this is, this is $300, this is $129, so, you know, four, 429 or so, so definitely not a cheap combo, but if you're gonna get a swim bait combo for anything less than big glide baits, that is your combo right there. Then I have my football jig combo. It is summertime in Texas, and so that means football jigs are very, very crucial to catching those offshore brush pile fish. And so I have here one of my longest casting reels, and I was quite surprised when I got it how far it cast. I don't know if it's the, the bearings inside of it. I don't know if it's just because of the way that it's built, but it casts incredibly far, and that is the custom inshore. I have gained an appreciation through the spinning reels and through this reel right here for saltwater reels and fresh water because they're built, I think, to a higher standard to you know withstand all of the salt pressure you're going to have in salt water. But in fresh water, you're never going to have any of that. And so this reel has functioned incredibly well. And I've got 17 pound CR and VizX on that with the football jig rod. Now, the custom speed stick series, you, you guys will see I use a ton of those because they're multi purpose in a sense, but they're also technique specific. So the rod has a name on it. This rod says football jig rod, but it is a 7.3 heavy. So I could use it for flipping. I could throw a frog on it. I could skip a dock. Uh, but I, I tend to use this thing mostly for jigs and mostly for football jigs just because um, of the action of the rod and how I'm able to get a good hook set with it. Now, one reel that I do not have a rod for right now, and I'm actually planning on spooling up some eight or 10 pound fluorocarbon for New York, is the, uh, I think it's the Custom Pro. Yes, the Team Lose Custom Pro. And I think this one, again, was the highest quality until they came out with the Hypermag. But this thing is kind of more of a beefy model. So this is meant more for, you know, your, your flipping, your frogging. It has a carbon fiber handle, has a really, really strong drag system. And I've just kind of fallen in love with this reel. And who wouldn't like the look? It is like dark gray with, with black and gold. It is a sexy looking reel. So that is the one that I'm gonna spool some light line on to throw up in New York. And actually, now that I think about it, I might replace that hypermag that I had with some light line because like I said, this one is meant for more flipping. You can use any of these reels for whatever, but I should rethink that decision there. Uh, and this reel I believe is $250. So definitely one of the best higher quality budget versions of the reels that I have. And two more rod and reel combos that I have are some of my Texas rig. Actually, one is a Texas rig rod. This is a 7.3 medium heavy. I think I have two of these, yes. I have, I have the Pro TI combo. This is probably a 350, this is like a $600 combo. It's incredible, it is light, it is sensitive, it's the best combo that I have. Do you need a $600 combo to catch fish? No, you could do it on the, the Lose Mach 2 combo for you know $170, or even the, the American Hero combo for $100. Those are incredible, uh, but because I'm a tournament angler and I need uh, really, really good quality stuff on the higher end of the spectrum for the amount of days that I fish per year and the high stakes tournaments that I'm in, uh, I just prefer to go with the higher quality stuff. And so, I have the Pro TI reel with the Pro TI rod, and this is again seven five to one. I love. I think I'm more of a higher gear ratio guy. Back in the day, 20 years ago, everybody had like four and five speed gear ratio reels, but nowadays I think the higher sixes to sevens are becoming more you know commonplace. So that is what I have for this Texas rig seven three medium heavy. This is the custom black speed stick seven three medium heavy with I'm not sure which rod. Oh, the new Tournament Pro. This is the one that replaced the. Pro G, I believe it was called two years ago. And it is an incredible rod as well. But the rod that I fell in love with early on in the spring is my spinnerbait rod. And you may say, Tyler, you hate spinnerbaits. And to be honest, there's still a part of me that does, but this rod has helped me, helped alleviate uh, a little bit of that hate. And that is the TP1 Black Speed Stick 610 Medium Heavy Spinnerbait Rod. I have used this thing, like I mentioned earlier, for jerk baits and for Texas rigs when I need it, but this is my spinnerbait and underspin, you could say, combo that I dedicate to that. Uh, like I said, I have the Tournament Pro with some 15 pound CR Invisex. And I believe, with that being said, that is all of my rod and reel combos. I may have one or two back at the house. I think I have a huge swim bait combo that I throw my A-rigs and my giant glide baits and also my musky lures on. It is the eight foot custom speed stick uh, swim bait rod with the brand new uh, Super Duty 300 reel. I left that back at the house because I'm not gonna use it until later on this summer. But that is the rod and reel arsenal for you guys. Now I've got the uh, task of putting them all back in my rod locker. Oh boy. 
And that is good timing. The sun is going down to finish this video. So of course, as always, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. If you guys are new here and I didn't introduce myself well enough, my name is Tyler Anderson. I've been doing this YouTube thing for a long time, but uh, was a college student. And so kind of a lot of videos like this for the past four years have been pushed down to the wayside, but I'm very excited to be a full-time YouTuber now. Uh, of course, Gonna plug subscribe again. I'm trying to reach 250,000 subscribers by the end of the year, which is definitely a daunting task, but I believe that anything is possible with a lot of hard work. And so I'm gonna be putting in a ton of hard work throughout this summer and this fall uh, to reach that goal. If you have any questions about the rod or reel combos, leave those down in the comments section below and I will make sure to answer those comments. And of course, any social medias that I have, I'm always answering messages. So whether it's Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Snapchat, all that stuff, they'll all be linked below. And you guys can ask me questions about the rod and reels on those social medias. So with that said, thanks so much for watching this video, and we'll see you guys on the next episode of TRF. Rods and reels, and rods and rods and reels.